Paint splatters on screen revealing a series of images, a woman playing violin, then in a bright pink costume, then in a blind skier pinning atop a mountain. The paint drip splatters revealing text in print and braille, unsightly opinions. Hi, welcome to Unsightly Opinions. My name is Tamara. Today, we are going to be gardening. I have had a few questions over the last couple of years asking me how I garden, how I do things outside in the yard as a blind person, so this year I thought I'd take you along the journey. Today, we are going to be starting the germination process, doing some, but not all of the planting, and getting things going so that hopefully in a month or two, when the weather's nicer outside, we can get everything into the ground and have a really great harvest this year. I'm going to be doing a few videos throughout the summer to keep you updated when we actually put it in the ground, when we're starting and taking things out, how I keep track of things as a blind person, any modifications I make. So if you feel like gardening, you can do it yourself. I do not claim to be an expert gardener. It's just something I really enjoy doing. Robbie is with me today. We are going to be starting quite a few things. Could you take them through all of the things that we have for seeds that we're going to be doing this year? Doing some red and sweet onions, kabocha squash, squash, butternut squash, a couple varietals of cucumbers, a watermelon, a couple varietals of corn, lettuce, eggplant, a couple varietals of beets, leeks, cabbage, carrots, and radishes. And there was spinach in there as well, I think you forgot to say. And on top of all of that, we're probably going to be getting some berries and some tomatoes and a few other odds and ends as things start to warm up, but those will get as seedlings because I don't like to start tomato from seed. That's just painful. Let's get started by deciding what we're going to plant that needs to get started right away. I know the onions are a for sure because they take an awfully long time. Squash, probably. definitely. Might want to get the corn started. Yeah, that's probably a good call. The beets. Yeah, beets wouldn't be bad. Any others? Do you want to just... perhaps? Yeah, any of the squashes I think we want to start today for sure. So do you want to hand me all of those? I am not sure how watermelon's going to work. I've never done watermelon before and I have never done corn before. So this is very exciting. I've done most of the others. The rest of those will probably go in the ground later on. Yeah, the beets look like 50 50 to 70 days, cabbage 67, lettuce 67, surprising, uh, cucumbers 45 and 65 days each. We'll get those in May long probably. The first step is going to be deciding how many of each we want and what's going to make the most sense in terms of potting. I have three different kinds of potting arrangements here. We have germination pucks that expand significantly when you expose them to water that you can just put one seed in. And we have two varietals of peat moss planters or trays or cups or whatever you want to call them. And we have just plain old trays that we can fill with dirt and label accordingly. So because these ones did not come with little holes in the bottom, I do want to poke a hole for drainage in the bottom of each one. Just take a pair of scissors and stab just in case it gets too much water. Okay. Um, we want to be very careful about drainage. So that'll be the first step. And then we're going to want to fill all the containers. These ones are really nice because you just fill it up to, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a groove. Mm -hmm. That's usually where I just fill the soil to. Right. And then I don't know if you can see that on camera, but there's a very tactile line that you fill the soil up to. So it, again, very accessible. And we lost all the footage for the rest of the video. So I am back now a week later for round two. It was a great video. I'm very disappointed that you don't get to see it. In front of me, I have some peat moss pots. I have some plastic pots. I've got a Sharpie and a pen and some more seeds. So I'm gonna start by putting soil in all of these pots. I am presently wearing gloves so I can keep my fingers clean. I don't know if you can see this on camera, but I've poked a hole in the bottom of each of these peat pots with some scissors. I just kind of poke it straight through the bottom, kind of twist it a little bit. Inside you can feel there's a tactile line. So I feel that with my fingers and I feel the dirt to the tactile line. It gives you about a centimeter of space and headroom at the top of the pot. Filling this up, I have a big, big box of dirt here. I just use my hands to kind of tell when it's full enough. There's a big rock in there. I definitely don't want that. Brush away any excess and then I just put it in my tray. And then I just kind of repeat the process, kind of just scooping a little bit in and then feeling that it's enough dirt so it meets the line and not too much. Brush the excess off and then place it in my drainage tray, which is just a plastic tray underneath all of my peat pots. So when it gets wet, it's not gonna make a big mess on my countertop. 
And then if I have a big pot like this one here, again, if it doesn't come with pre-drainage holes, I just poke through at the bottom with scissors. And then again, I just use my hand to shovel dirt into the pot until it gets full enough. Yes, you can use shovels, but I find it's easier to just use my hand. It might take a little bit longer than a shovel, but then I can be a lot more controlled in what I'm getting in the pot. Because we have the magic of television here, I've already pre-filled a few pots, so I'm going to move on over to those, and then we're gonna get planting some seeds. In the last video, which you unfortunately don't get to see, I talked about how I use fat popsicle sticks and braille label paper to label every single one of my pots or rows and create a system for myself so I know what's where. Unfortunately, I am now out of braille label paper and waiting for more to arrive, so we had to devise a different plan. In theory, this should work, and if you didn't catch the video, you can see it in a tag above. I have NFC tags, and I'm going to try and label each row on the outside of the pan with an NFC sticker so that I know what's in each pot with a digital label, which takes a little more time than reading Braille, but this should work and still make it accessible for me. In front of me, I have a plastic tray with five by three, so five or three columns, five rows of peat pots. And we're going to be planting a few different things in there. I wanna talk about how I plant big seeds, how I plant little seeds, and most importantly, how I water, because I think that's where most people run into challenges. Normally, I would read with Be My Eyes to tell what kind of seeds these are, but seeing as my phone is presently in use, I'm going to get the Seeing AI Robbie to read this to me. Eggplant. Eggplant, okay, thank you. I'm gonna do that one last because it's a little seed, uh, and this, Oh, I can feel what this is. This is corn. Okay, so the one with more seeds in it is the white onions and the eggplant is closest to me. So instead of the little pots, because corn grows very quickly, and we already made a little oopsie, we were planting both sweet corn and <laughs> popcorn, and unfortunately that does not grow well together because it can cross pollinate, and then you get really tough, nasty corn that you can't eat. So we're going to try and separate them. In planting this corn, it wants to be about one inch deep or two centimeters. So all I do is in the center of this pot here, and I'm using a large pot for corn because it needs a lot of room, I'm going to just poke through with my gloves on to my first knuckle and that's about two and a half centimeters on most people. And plants aren't quite as picky as a lot of people think they are when it comes to planting things. Plants will grow just about anywhere. So I've got that hole, I feel for the hole with my index finger, and then I drop it in with my middle finger and thumb, and then pinch from the outsides of the pot inwards to cover it in dirt, and then pat the soil over top. The reason I don't cover, I pinch from the outside, is I wanna make sure that the hole that I created is getting covered, and I'm not pushing the seed up on top of the soil because I'm not gonna see it if it's there because there's lots of chunks and things in dirt. It's hard to tell if there's a seed sitting on top. So I always pinch from the outside of the pot in towards the center, create a little dome and then pat it down. I'll do that again just with another big pot here. Grab another corn kernel. And I can leave my gloves on to do this. It's not a big deal. It's relatively straightforward. Because it's a big seed, I can feel it through my gloves. It's no problem. So just go to the center of the pot, push down to the top of my knuckle, put the seed in, pinch the dirt over top, or pull the dirt over top from the outside. How would you describe this it's almost like I'm clawing, clawing shut. Like I have my hands open in a claw and then I claw shut into a point. How would you describe this motion, Robbie? Yeah, five finger pinch. That's, that's, yeah, that's probably a better way to describe it. And then I tap the dirt or just gently tap it down with the back of my fingers. And I'll move that out of the way so I don't plant in it again. When it comes to little things, it gets a little more complicated because the seeds are tiny. So the first thing I do when I'm planting tiny seeds is I'll make the holes first wearing gloves. And the gloves are important and you'll see why in a second. Poke the hole down to that first knuckle because that's what these seeds want as well. They don't want to be too superficial. And then I will take one of my gloves off so I can feel very fine details because that's important for this next part. I'll pour a few seeds into my palm, pinch a bunch of seeds into my hand, and then just kind of rub, rub them back and forth between my fingers until I feel only one or two seeds between my fingers and then I will find that hole and drop it in. Then I'll wait to cover it up for just a second because I don't want to get my hands dirty and I will do that again. I will rub my fingers together to drop until I only have what I feel like one or two seeds in my fingers. Find the hole with my other hand, drop it in and then I'll cover it in a second. Same thing, 
Again, just rubbing it between my index finger and thumb, picking it up out of my palm till I have just one or two in my fingers. And you can feel that. It's like if you were picking up lots of beads, you can feel when you have one bead or lots of beads in your hand. I don't know if that's a common thing that most people do, but something I've had a lot of experience with. And then once I've got an everything planted that I want to plant, I just cover it with dirt again. So that's generally the process. I'm going to cut for just a second so that I can finish off all of these pots and then I'll show you how I water it and give you an update on the plants that I planted a week ago. Now that we've got everything planted and covered, it's time to water. And I don't do it the typical way with a watering can. I use a spray bottle and there's a couple of reasons for that. As a blind person, it's hard for me to to judge exactly how much water is coming out of something that free pours. Can I do it by pouring over my finger? Yes, but does that usually make a little bit more of a mess? Also yes. So using a spray bottle, I can quantify how much water is going into each pot and it doesn't disturb where the seed is sitting. Because if you pour too quickly, it creates divots in the dirt and that might expose the seed to air and we don't want that. So using the spray bottle really, really helps to make sure that we're getting exactly the water that we want and we're controlling it. So so I can feel the nozzle of the spray bottle. I can get it right in line with the pot, feel with my fingers and then spray. And that makes it really easy. So I know 10 sprays. Okay. And then I'll do this exact same on the next one. Feel to make sure I'm lined up with my fingers. And then I use my other hand, not wearing a glove to feel the top and bottom of each pot to make sure that as I'm spraying, the water is going between my fingers. And that's about the nuts and bolts of how I get a garden started as a blind person. Before we wind down, I want to show you what the seeds look like that we did last week. Over here, we have quite a few things and you can actually see from last week that I have these braille labels. This is red onion. So I can keep track of what's in each one of these containers and I can just feel around with my fingers to see what's sprouting just very, very delicately. So I can tell what's kind of popped up and what hasn't. We've got our leeks coming up. We've got, what's over here? Is this still leeks or is this onions? We've got some corn over here. It's the big tall ones. We've got just about everything coming up and this is only a week's worth of growth. So I'm really pleased that this is coming along so well and we'll keep you posted as things develop. I know this video is a little different from some of the stuff we do. So let me know if you like this video style, if this is something that you want to see more of or not. Before we go, I wanna know your favorite blind or low vision gardening tips. Is there anything that you do that makes it more accessible for you? Please share that down below. And if you have any questions that we haven't addressed in this video about gardening, please leave those down below as well. And we can address those in the next update video, which is probably gonna come at the end of May when all of these seedlings get transplanted into the ground. As as always, if you've made it this far, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you need more content, you can check out my social media accounts down below. Please consider liking, commenting, subscribing. That's all I have for you this time. I'll see you again soon. Bye for now.